Welcome back to Question Period. There are just days left before the House is set to rise for the winter holiday. Despite that, though, politicians are feeling the heat. Late last week, the Tories forced 27 hours of marathon voting on thousands of items meant to stall the government's economic legislation in an effort to get the Liberals to scrap their carbon tax. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau criticized the move as, quote, pulling stunts, and the Liberals accused Tory leader Pierre Polyev of gaslighting Canadians. Take a listen. I've got news for Justin Trudeau. You've ruined Christmas for Canadians. Common sense Conservatives are going to ruin your vacation as well. We are going to put in thousands of amendments at committee and in the House of Commons. You will have no rest until the tax is gone. This is specifically because he is leading the charge when it comes to that extreme right-wing agenda that is all about shutting down the government, holding back vital supports to Canadians. So what should we read into what you just heard? Our Sunday strategy session is here to weigh in on that. Kathleen Monk is a former NDP strategist and director of communications to the late Jack Layton. Corey Tonight was Ontario Premier Doug Ford's campaign manager and former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And Scott Reed is a CTV News political analyst and former communications director to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Hi, everybody. Hey there. Good to see you. Let's, Hi. Let's talk about the tactics here. I know there's a lot of people discussing the semantics, but I, I was wondering from where you sit, Corey, I'll start with you what the contrast and the way in which both parties are contrasting themselves against each other tells you about the approach that they're going to take into the new year. Well, I think one's on point and the other is, is a little befuddling. Uh, I, I think Polyev's on point. Like the job of the opposition, first and foremost, is to oppose. And, and you're wanting to oppose on things where you know that you're driving a wedge that's going to wedge uh, you know, the vast majority of voters in the middle towards your party and away from, and away from the government. And I think they're, they're doing a good job of that, generally speaking, but I think particularly in this instance, because they're centering it around uh, the carbon tax, which, as you know, we've discussed many times in the past, is a, is a pretty unpopular policy position right now. And so in, insofar as they're keeping the lens focused on that, I think it's really good. Um, you know, as for the gaslighting comment, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, probably not the most perfect use of the term uh, I've ever heard uh, in, in terms of how uh, Karina Gould was, was employing it. Uh, but also it's one that's devoid of message. You know, you're not you're not wedging towards uh, a message or a narrative uh, which people can A, understand or B, support. Do you think, Scott, it's devoid of message, or, or what do you think that the, is the message they're trying to land, and is it effective? It's like watching drunk people swim. It's just <laughs> ugly, and it surely can't be safe. I don't think that anybody wins. I don't think that Pierre Polyev is driving the wedge on the carbon tax and further associate himself with that. I think people just hear knobs acting like knobs. And uh, and I, I, to be honest, even the, the liberal response, and in that sense, it, it kind of, I guess, rewards the conservatives in the sense that the only signal that people receive is um, there's just there's just garbage going on down there. And so I think it makes people who are already deeply, deeply cynical about politics even more profoundly disappointed. Uh, and they just plug out and uh, turn it off. So two parts to that, Kathleen. Do you think that that is true, that 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 type of partisanship, I guess, is the way to describe it? This this type of partisanship will definitely inform the way things transpire in the next year and do you think as, as a second sort of addendum does that um rub canadians the wrong way yeah for first of all i would say that this kind of silly season that we're in right now towards the end of any, any end of any parliamentary session always happens but this is a bit different this is the conservatives in the last few days have unleashed basically a shock and awe of obstructionist techniques that you don't normally see in this kind of a wide vast array in terms of the number of amendments the different kind of committee attacks and in the house procedures that they've been doing Doing. And I think actually, I think that it will go into 2024. I think we will see the same kind of thing. It will go, frankly, will go up to the election, maybe all the way to 2025 if this is, if the government plans to go that long, all the way to October. But I think that there's some risk because while I, you know, some of this obstruction is natural and common and re annual, repeated all the time, what Pierre Polyev is doing is different because, and it could actually, it has a 55% chance, could backfire or produce a dividend. And why I say that is that all these votes that he's now voting against in the House or his party party is through the nights and, and whatever. He's voting against a children's lunch program. Who can avoid wanting to support kids that want a free bagel and an apple for lunch? Who would want to stop aid going to military aid going to Ukraine? And so they have to realize that this is where this kind of strategy could backfire on them because now 
liberals, if they're smart, will turn around these elements and put them into attack ads. Because why would you want children to starve? Why are you voting against a national program? Are you uh, lunch you're writing them for that? <laughs> do, do, yeah. you, do, do you think that's the case, Corey? And, and would the conservatives have anticipated that? Oh, you left out killing kittens and, you know, uh, p pushing old, old we'll ladies see. to the We'll see. Maybe we should add it to the list. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that's what people are hearing. I, what I think people are hearing is uh, that the Conservative Party is fighting on cost of living issues, uh, which are front and center for, for Canadian voters right now. Like, there's a reason why the Conservatives are doing as well in the polls they are right now, and that's message discipline around the economy and cost of living. And when we've seen them do not as well, it's when they get sort of dragged into these, you know, inside Ottawa issues around foreign electoral interference or other things, which it's not to say that those things aren't important. Of course, they are. But they're, they just don't connect with voters uh, en masse the way these bread and butter economic issues do. And so like, I, I think it's smart to have one last push before you uh, everybody breaks for Christmas to turn the lens to those issues, particularly around the carbon tax, and drive a clear message. And I don't think anybody at home is hearing about the, you know, stealing lunch money from children stuff. That, that they Kathleen will. They was, will. Was going, <laughs> well, you know, that would require the, the opposition to actually run ads and do normal things that you do in political fights that we have yet to see from this, uh, this liberal government. Do you think that they will, Scott, in this case, do what Kathleen outlined? Beats me. Um, I mean, they. I, I say that like with uh, all the dripping cynicism that is implied because, you know, they haven't uh, put together ads over the course of the past year. I think that that's puzzling. So, you know, if, if the best hope from this kind of like, you know, three ring circus of the past week in Ottawa is that they're going to be turning them into effective ads down the road. Well, I guess here's hoping, um, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I, I, I will say this. I don't agree with Corey. I don't think that there's any message that's extracted from this. The idea and this is where I, I think the conservatives, particularly, you know, and it's indicative of Polyev, you know, they, they can outsmart themselves. They think they're like just a little bit too clever by half. The idea that people are actually hearing him talk about the carbon tax, they're not. They just hear literally silliness happening and they it just literally they turn away now maybe that does reward the conservatives insofar as if people are persuaded that nothing good is going on down there and it's all just chaos maybe that sort of you know pounds away in favor of change but i do not believe that it's rewarding the conservatives from an issue set um, and I do think that if the liberals are smart, they'll be able to put some of these things together and string it into a narrative about the kind of character and the kind of character shown by Pierre Polyev. My guess is that the conservatives aren't too worried about using this type of thing to sway people to their side. It seems to me like they are using it to galvanize people who already feel unsupportive of the carbon tax, which is not a, a small swath of society at this it's point. It's not a small swath, but you have to wonder, question, have they reached their ceiling on gaining support around the tar carbon tax issue? You know, um, they have been very successful, hitting around 40% in the polls for a number of months now. But there are some polls, like Leger, that are saying that they're starting to stall out. So the question is, them continuing to hammer out on this one issue of the carbon tax and not have a wider, a, a wider message track on affordability. But I would just say that, you know, I, I think that really the Conservatives have to be careful of this obstructionist technique, where essentially they're saying Canada's broken, but simultaneously holding a hammer that they're breaking Canada with or breaking the parliamentary system at least. Oh boy. All right. Well, <laughs> just just a, just a light uh, Sunday morning. All right. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Scott Reed, Corey tonight and Kathleen Monk.